Hi, I'm Dr. Erica Latcher, and today for you guys, our patrons, that we appreciate so, so much, we're going to do a talk about body condition score and how we do it. Uh, this seems super appropriate since we're shooting this right after Thanksgiving, and my body condition score went up a point or two the other day. So here we go. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Body condition scores for horses are on a scale of one to nine. One being, oh my gosh, I can see absolutely every bone in their body. And nine being, do they even have bones because I can't feel them because they're so fat. Uh, body condition score nine horses also have a rain gauge on their back. We'll talk about that in a second. But overall, where we like them to be is a body condition score of four, five, or six. When you're thinking about that, Fours are typically racehorses. You know, if you look at your racehorses and your eventers, they're super fit. You'll see that you probably see more rib than you think you should, you'd like to, but they're just really fit horses. So they have no body fat uh, and they're out there being athletes. Fives are a little bit of rib. Six is a little bit of covering. So just as a, a goal for what we're looking for. Body condition score is something that I look at on every horse when I walk up to them something I sort of do subconsciously. It's the first thing I look at when I walk up. So as I walk up, I assess a few things. Neck, uh, if you look at, this is Vespa here. Um, and just for reference, she's probably like a five plus on body condition score. She's in really good shape right now. Um, her neck, if you look, it has maybe a little bit of a crest kind of going upwards, but it doesn't have a big crest. You know, there's just sort of the hint of a curve. This is all you should see on a normal horse. You should never see this going bloop um, or worse, falling over towards you. That's a lot of fat. The other thing I'm going to check on this is I'm going to get my hands on her. I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to cup it across her crest like this. On a normal horse, you should be doing this right here. See how my hand is a nice arc? As they get fatter and fatter, your hand starts to do this. And you shouldn't get the impression that there's any width to the crest. That's really bad. So again, I'm going to touch the crest, slide my hand over it. I'm going to look at the next place that we like to see fat, which is uh, on the shoulder. She does have a little tiny shoulder fat pad here. We'll show you that a little bit better in a second. Um, but I want to see, is there a fat pad here or not? And then I'm going to run my hand down. I can feel her ribs. And again, we're gonna show you this in a second. I can also catch a shadow of her ribs. And that is normal. You should be able to see a shadow of rib, despite what our horses tell us. Um, the other thing I'm looking at from here is how much spring does her barrel have? So is she fat this way? Some horses carry themselves like that. And it's a, you know, their, their ribs are showing but they've just got a bigger barrel, especially brood mares that have had a bunch of foals will have a lot of spring to their belly. So it's just something I'm getting an eye on. Can I see a lot of it this way? The next thing, can I see a lot of it this way? Vespa here has a tuck. You know, as her belly comes back, it tucks up here and that's nice and normal as well. So those are kind of the things I'm checking to make my body condition score. The next place we're gonna look, and this is super important, is the curve of the buttocks. Uh, so as the butt comes around here, you should have one nice curve that comes all the way down like she has. One of the worst places we can have fat is right here. And what that'll look like is these two bumps right here. And the tail, if you look at her tail, you can see her tail on the camera kind of past her butt. And that's how it should be. It should not be hidden down behind fat pads right here. So those are some of the basic things we look at. So why is Vespa a body condition score of five with a little bit of a plus? And that is because we don't have body fat here. I can catch a shadow of her ribs. And again, I'm gonna turn her in one sec so you can see that. 
I would probably call her a plain five if she didn't have a little bit more fat here than I think she should. Uh, and she doesn't have much of a crusty neck. She also doesn't have a big belly, but to be honest, bellies don't factor too strongly into our body condition score. And the reason is this can fill up with hay, grass, any sort of roughage and get bigger, but not necessarily affect where we've got fat stores in the body. So I take the belly into sort of a notation of it, but it doesn't factor in terribly strongly into our body condition score. So let me get her turned for you guys and we can look at her sort of long ways with the camera looking down her side. Okay, so looking down her side right here, you can see that we've got just a shadow of rib. Nothing huge, but we've just got a bit. You can also see probably from this angle a little better that she's got some definite fat going right here. This is what we call the shoulder fat pad. Not much of it, but just a bit of it. Um, but otherwise, this is, you can also see from this angle, she doesn't have, her barrel doesn't sort of, she's going to show you guys a little bit better. She doesn't have a whole lot of barrel sticking out on either side. She's, uh, she's just got a nice flat shot down there. So this is a body condition score of five to five and a half. And this is actually ideal. This is what we want to see in our athletes. It puts good weight on them to have some reserves for going to a horse show, but it keeps them from carrying more weight than they should. So there we go. Okay, in contrast, we have Bolt here. And Bolt is basically retired. He hasn't been ridden in probably two or three years. And he's what I call skinny fat. So he is also uh, probably a body condition score of five going into six right now. But if you notice, he has a big belly. This is because he gets lots of roughage. So he has a good, good supply right here of hay belliness, but he doesn't have much of a top line and you can actually catch a shadow of his ribs as well. For Bolt to look good up here, we would have to go with um, some riding, <laughs> honestly. He just doesn't have a lot of muscle. He has a little bit of walking horse in him as well, and their body type is just a little bit what we call slab-sided, where these, uh, the top here is harder to get top line on. So this is where body type is really important when you're calculating in your body condition score. So the thing that would happen with Bolt if he got more exercise is we would then have better core muscles here and this belly would get sucked up a little bit. But again, just like Vespa, he's got a little bit of a fat pad here. When I put my hand on his mane, he's got not much going on and he doesn't have much of a, a butt fat pad at all. I can see his tail. So, you know, he's a little pointy up top and that's because he doesn't have any top line. But overall, he's actually a pretty good weight um, I'd like a little more on him, so we recently increased his feed, and then he went on uh, hay for the winter, so that actually helps him put on weight here. So there you go, just a different body condition score five. Okay, so let's talk body condition score of six, six and a half. Uh, Piper here, just the way that her neck is, it's going to be hard to get a lot of fat on her neck. Uh, her conformation is such that she just always sort of has a, a skinny neck. And when I put my hand on it, it's pretty darn skinny. Um, but coming down her body, got to stand up, Piper. She's trying to make herself look fatter than she is. She has really good top line. She's pretty broad across here. Some of this is going to be her body type, but... She's also a body type horse that is going to put a lot of fat on right here. So if you get her into the sevens or eights, she's going to have tons of fat here. And she's going to have what I call the rain gauge where they have a gutter up here. And you can tell how much it rained because they're storing rain up there. You do not want a rain gauge. That's a bad sign. Horses shouldn't have gutters on the top of their back. Uh, the other thing on her is yet yeah, no ribs. Um, I can, I have to push pretty hard to get to where I can feel a rib on her. She's got a, a generous fat layer laying over her ribs. What she doesn't have though is unlike Bolt who had sort of a big belly, you'll see that she doesn't have that. And it's because she gets ridden quite a bit more. So she's not going to carry her weight like this. She's going to carry it as a fat layer over top of everything else. Uh, the other thing that she doesn't have, which is good, stand up. As you'll see, we do not have the butt pad right here. The reason I keep emphasizing these 
They are really, really bad. When we start to see significant butt pads and big shoulder ones and or crests. So three big spots, crest, shoulder, butt. We see two out of three, I'm worrying about laminitis in a big way. Like these are the ones that you guys then call me on Monday morning and you say, oh my gosh, yesterday my horse was fine, this morning their foot sore. So two out of three on the fat pads and we get really, really worried. So that's why I keep emphasizing those. But Piper, um, the other thing, let's see if she'll turn. Does that work? Or do I need her more that way? I'll move it. Okay, got it. All right, looking down her side, she's got a bit of a fat pad here. Um, what I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick up is there is a line right here that's fat. <laughs> And what you'll not see on her that you saw on Vespa is a shadow of rib. It's not there. It's not that you're not seeing it because of the camera. It's that she doesn't have one. It doesn't exist. And you can see, she's trying to hide it with her head here, but you can see that like I can, I can push in. There's depth there. And that's because she's got a nice layer of fat over here. What you don't see is that she has a belly sticking out much. Uh, and that's again, She's worked a lot, so her fat is, is over the top of her ribs. All right, so I take a combination of my body condition score that I've given them and a weight. How do I weigh them, you ask? I don't carry a scale around in the truck. There's not enough room, I promise you. My favorite way to weigh them is with just a tape measure. And I like the calculated method. So. What we do is drop it around their heart girth. To keep myself consistent, I usually go to the last hair on the mane, set the tape there, and I go relatively firm. So she's a 77. The next thing I do is I set my tape right on the front of her chest. I come across the point of her shoulder. That's really important that you're crossing that point of the shoulder. Come down, you're like, oh, Erica, your arm's not long enough. It's okay, I'll make it. Do, 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 do. Then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to show you guys this in a second, but 74. So right here, we are not going to, we're not measuring her for a blanket. What we're looking for is there is a crease in the musculature right here. That's what we're measuring too. Even on really fat horses, you can feel it if you just get your hand in there and sort of do this, but it's this crease right here. So now to get the weight, we're going to take 77 times 77 times 74, which is her length, and we're gonna divide it by 330. We're gonna pause the camera for a minute because I have to get a calculator to do that math. Okay, so we're back after doing some math because I can't do that in my head. So Piper here weighs 1,329 pounds. Well, she's close to that. And I will tell you the reason I like this method, you can also do the weight tapes that just go around and give you a number, but I feel like this is a more accurate way. And I've had horses that we've weighed by this method that ended up on a scale several days before or after we weighed them. And we were within about 20 pounds, which when you're talking about 1,329 pounds, within 20 pounds is close enough. What you will know though from this is that, so Piper weighs 1,329 and she's a six. If we wanted her to be a five, she would need to be down in the 1,230 range. Each body condition score is about 100 pounds. So I wish each body condition score for me was about 100 pounds, but that's not how that works. Anyway, uh, so if we wanted her down in a five, she'd need to lose 100 pounds. And if I'm the one doing the measurement, then I'm going to stay pretty consistent with how I do it. And so if I say she's lost 100 pounds on my weight tape, she probably has. So I recommend weighing your horse at least once a week every other week if you're trying to make some changes once a month otherwise, and putting it together with where you see fat pads and coming up with a combination of body condition, score, and weight. Just gonna put a little tiny plug in there as well for the fact that Piper is 1,329 pounds. I'm not sure that you would guess that, but if you went with the usual, oh, 
horses weigh a thousand pounds, you would be underdosing her for dewormers, medication, all kinds of things. So knowing your horse's weight is really important. Combining it with body condition score gives you a great place to go to keep them happy and healthy. One of the questions we get asked a lot is I drove by a group of horses and some of them were really, really skinny. And yes, oftentimes they are really, really skinny, but they will get talked about as body condition scores of one or two. Having been involved in some of those cases, those are incredibly skinny horses. So what you wanna look for to see if a horse is headed towards skinny that is really, really dangerous is that this area here, so on Bolt, you saw that he was a little bit what we call slab-sided, where it angles down. Piper's sort of the opposite, she's really wide. But when horses start to get dangerously skinny, this area here actually turns into a shelf and it's shaped like this instead of like this. And that's when we start to get really worried. Those are the horses that we wanna get on really, really, really aggressive feeding programs really quickly. And aggressive doesn't always mean feeding them a lot. It just means feeding them in a very specific way. So if you see that on a horse you're driving by, that's a really big deal and you definitely need to call someone probably your veterinarian that you have a great relationship with uh, and get started on trying to get that horse in a better place. Um, what does not necessarily, especially in older horses, count as super skinny is when we start to see really pointy butts. So just because they have kind of a point coming up here, that can be a sign of a little bit of arthritis, but not necessarily skinny. What they will get is that same depression here. And it's because there's a big muscle right here called the glute medius gluteus medius uh, that goes away and it's the body taking the protein from that muscle to try to keep itself going so if you start to see depressions kind of on any of these top line areas those are really bad things uh, like I said the other problem is really fat horses and for those we're looking at the opposite do we have fat deposits in some of these areas and that can be really really dangerous as well so that's body condition score in a nutshell Super important baseline health score for these guys and combine that with weight and you've got a good place to go to base your nutrition off of, to base your exercise programs off of, everything you do with your horse. Body condition score, so, so important. So I want to thank you guys for all being patrons of the podcast. We truly appreciate it. If you have questions, drop them down below and we will get back to you.